For those of you that do not know, Packet Tracer is a software that can be used to simulate network equipment like Cisco routers and switches. So instead of spending hundreds of dollars on physical hardware, you can use an application to learn how to configure Cisco network equipment to prepare for the CCNA exam. To download Packet Tracer, you just have to go to the Cisco Networking Academy website, www.netacad.com. And then if you go to About Us and click Packet Tracer, it's going to take you to a page where you can download it. Now to download it, if you're an existing Networking Academy student, then you already will have access when you're logged in to the website for the Packet Tracer download. If you are not already a Networking Academy student, then you can click sign up, enter your name and email address, and then you will have access to the Packet Tracer download. The download is for Windows or Linux operating systems. For Mac users, of course, you can just launch a VM of Windows or Linux to launch the application. Once Packet Tracer is downloaded, you just have to run through a quick installation wizard and then launch the application. So here's our blank Packet Tracer topology. If you go on the bottom left hand corner, you can see that you have routers to choose from to drag into the topology, as well as devices like switches. So I'll click on switches, I'll just pick one of these options. They do have layer 2 and layer 3 switches put some switches out here. If you accidentally add a device to the topology you can either undo it with the option up top or you can click on the X icon here hover over the device and delete it. When you're done deleting objects make sure to click back onto the cursor option on the top right hand side. Okay, so now that we have devices on our topology, we of course need to connect them. If you click this lightning bolt connections option here, you have all these different cable types to use. So if I wanted to actually use fiber or copper crossover cables, then I could just select that option, click on my device, select a port number, and then do the same on the adjacent device. The easiest way is to use the auto connect option. So if you click this lightning bolt icon, it'll just automatically choose the correct cable type for you. Router ports are shut down by default. That's why the router ports are red. So you'd actually have to log in and enable those ports. And then there's also devices like computers and servers and phones put some phones and computers out here and servers are actually really cool in Packet Tracer you can enable features like DNS, DHCP, NTP all types of server services let's finish connecting the rest of our devices here When you're connecting your computers to your phones, make sure that the computer goes to the PC port and then the switch goes to the switch port. One trick I want to share with you, in the real world, Phones would be connected to power over Ethernet switches. In Packet Tracer, to power up the phones, you actually have to drag a power supply onto the phone to get it to power up. So make sure you go ahead and do that on your phones. You see they're powering up now. Okay, so when you're ready to configure your equipment, you can left click on it and you can see physical components of your devices and you can actually power on and off your devices. So if I try to add this WIC card to this router, it's gonna tell me I can't because I need to power off the router. So I'd have to actually go and power it off with the power button here. And then I would be able to install the module and then power it back on. If you go to the config tab, 
you could set your device configurations from here but you really want to learn from the command line interface so we're going to go to the CLI tab and then we're logged into our device just like we would be in the real world the only difference is you're gonna have some command limitations so you're not going to have all the commands that you would on a real router or switch but for the CCNA exams you have pretty much everything you would need computers are handy in packet tracer because after you configure your routers and switches you want to make sure that you can communicate throughout your network topology so you're gonna to want to go to your computers and if you go to the config tab you can statically assign IP addresses to your computers or let them retrieve an address via DHCP if you configure DHCP services on a server or a router in your topology. Then once your IP address is configured on your computer, you can actually go to desktop and command prompt and run ping and trace route commands right from your computer to test your topology. And then I'll, I'll hit this X here to close out of my command prompt. You could actually set up your computer as a NetFlow collector, configure its firewall, and actually run some pretty cool applications right from your computer. Pretty much the same concept with your server except you're going to have some more options. So of course you're going to configure an IP address on it and then you have the services tab and you have all these server services that you can run. You can have it be a web server and actually pull down web pages. You can use TFTP or FTP from the server and it has software images if you wanted to practice downloading software images to your network devices and it can also be a NetFlow collector. Once you're satisfied with your topology you want to make sure you save it and then give it a name and it'll save it as a packet tracer file then you can access that same topology later on. One really cool thing with packet tracer that a lot of people don't know is if you go to file and open samples they have all these pre-built topologies that you can open up and learn from so for example if I go to this router folder and let's just pick EIGRP and this file here when you open these up it actually gives you instructions on how to configure and verify different features so it's telling me how to configure EIGRP authentication and then how to verify it. So really cool. You could spend a year <laughs> going through all these samples and you can actually learn a lot while you're preparing for your CCNA exam with these samples.